Alright, John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Lord God, the Father just asks you to bless this time, Lord God. Just lift up Ron, Lord God, from whatever to be, Lord, to bring him out. And Michael, Lord God, to see him, Lord, and Ron, his mother. Lord, we're going to be faithful no matter what, Lord. We're two or three are gathered together. There you are in midst of us. Lord God, we open up your holy word, Lord. Turn off the machinery, Lord God, and let us get the word. For Jesus' sake we pray. Amen. Amen. So, we're looking at John chapter 1, verse 33. And we're going to... Uh, I knew him not... For he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom you shall see the Spirit descending and remain upon him, that's that dove, the same is he which baptizes in the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. End of uh, parenthesis, paragraph. So what we're going to do is we're going to recap back into baptism. We're going to study that out with another avenue, but still the same avenue, because baptism, baptist, I don't mean the Baptist church, baptism is a form of false doctrine in religion. And it needs to be correct, because if it's not done correct, because there are some people who say baptism is a form of salvation, and it's not. And if you believe on baptism for salvation instead of the blood, well, you're going to be in hell. You're going to wish you had that water that you were baptized in to cool your tongue. So, we already looked at he knew him not. How John the Baptist and Jesus are cousins. We saw that in Luke chapter 1. But baptism, uh, the Baptist, Matthew chapter 3 verse 1. It's the first time in the Bible, Matthew 3, 1. Mm -hmm. We go through the whole entire Old Testament. And we come to Baptist. The first place it shows up is in Matthew 3, 1. In those days came John the Baptist preaching the wilderness of Judah. Now, there are some heresies out there. The Baptist Church does not start with John the Baptist. John the Baptist does not believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Jesus has even begun his ministry at this point. Why is he called John the Baptist? Because that's exactly what he's doing. He's baptizing people, preaching. And that's what Baptists do. We, we preach... Then we baptize after salvation. So that's the first time Baptist shows up in your Bible. And it identifies with one person, not a group of people. Baptized, Matthew 3 6. This is the first time the word baptize shows up in the Bible. In Matthew 3, 6, and were baptized of him, John the Baptist, in Jordan, confessing their sins. So still we see that aspect of baptism. There's that preaching. There's the confession of sin. And then there's baptism. There's that aspect. Baptism, verse 7 But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said to a old generation of vipers, great way to introduce the religious people, mm -hmm. who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Look at, what, look at what we're looking at when we're looking at the first time the form of Baptist shows up. We look at a man who, in, in verse 1, we look at a man, he's preaching. We look at verse 6, they're confessing their sin. We look at verse 7, here comes the religious crowd. 
and he's rebuking them, and that though you be religious, you're a holy roller, there's wrath to come. He's not sitting down and dining with them. He's not agreeing with them. He said, you know what, you guys? And Jesus said at one time, except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of a Pharisee. Now, if there's anybody to be righteous, anybody to be up to it, to be the it, to be the it, it of all the it, as Paul was, was to be a Pharisee. Paul was a Pharisee. John the Baptist preaching, they're repenting their, their, of their sin. He said, you're wrath of God coming upon him. That's the wrong crowd to be pre preaching at that moment. Because to all the people that's witnessing John preaching, the nation of Israel, well those are the people. Those are God's people. What are you talking about? And he's preaching the truth no matter what. Verse 11. Chapter 3, verse 11. Baptized. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. There's repentance. But there cometh after me a mightier one, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. We already talked about that fire. That's hell. You're either going to be baptized with the Holy Ghost or you're going to be baptized with the lake of fire. But you're not going to be baptized with both. That's a false doctrine. We dealt with that earlier. So... Here comes baptism. There's preaching. Here comes baptism. They're confessing their sin. Here comes baptism that he's saying, hey, there's wrath to come. Here is baptism unto repentance. The elements are there. But yet, Jesus Christ has not died. He has not, he's not suffered. He's not died. He's not been buried. He's not been risen from the grave. <coughs> This can't save you. Because we are on this side of Calvary. We're not living in the gospel. And one of the things is, you know, the unpardonable sin. We cannot do the unpardonable sin today. The unpardonable sin is when the Pharisees accused Jesus of casting out unclean spirits. They say, hey, listen, you're doing that with Beelzebub, the devil. And when you're accusing Jesus of casting out the devils with the devil against the Holy Spirit of God, that's the unpardonable sin, which can't be done today because Jesus is not about healing. John's baptism can't be done today because Jesus has come, He has suffered, He has died, He's been buried, He rose again, He's seated at the right hand of the Father. We are baptized, yes, but after salvation, we, we did that study before with Philip and Ethiopian. And then, next place, first place, Matthew 28, 19. And what we looked at is the first, a bat, the word root baptism. Baptize, baptize, baptism. Matthew 28, verse 19 Alright, now that Jesus has suffered and died, He's been buried, He's arose again, He's in the resurrected body, He's been seen over above more than 400 people. Now He's talking to the apostles. Here comes the commission just before He ascends to heaven and before the book of Acts, Go ye therefore in all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. That's after the death of burial, and resurrection. Again, there's a problem to that. What do you say when you baptize somebody? After the death, after the burial, after the resurrection, after Jesus ascended to heaven, you go in the world, and when you baptize a believer who has put his faith in Jesus, you put him in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. There's some in Jesus' name only. There's some, you know, there's all variations. That's the problem with baptism. There's all different offshoots. There's all different chapters of baptism. And there are religions that will run in the, in the Bible and say, look, baptism, water, 
and you couldn't find water anywhere within the chapter before and the chapter after or the chapter it's talking about. I mean, there's a baptism to the death of Jesus. That's not water. So there's problems. The only root of baptism, uh, uh, bapt, you know, baptism, baptized, baptism is the New Testament. Testament. Baptism shows up 22 times in the Bible. Baptist shows up 14 times in the Bible. Baptized, nine times in the Bible. Baptizing, four times. Baptisms, once. Baptist, plural, one. There you go. Baptist, Baptist, plural. It's only one time in the Bible. Baptized 61 times. And I call myself a Baptist because I followed the traditions and the root of the history of the Baptists. And they match pretty well to what the Bible believes. And they match their form of baptism. A man is only baptized after the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ. But even now the Baptist church and the Baptists are starting to elude from the way. I will no longer call myself a Baptist if the name Baptist or the title Baptist goes contrary to Scripture. And pretty much when people come up to me and they say, well, you know, I come up in the street, what are you? I'm a born-again Bible-believing Christian. But then I throw Baptist. Because, uh, because a lot of these Baptist churches, uh, I, I don't want to be associated with them. I mean, Baptist church are just as worse as the, the one Catholic church. You can go in one Baptist church and they got this platform, that Baptist church has got that platform, that... Well, listen, there's no Baptists in heaven as there's no Catholics in heaven. Christians are, he are in heaven and the Catholic, just because they call themselves Christians, don't mean they're Christians. A Christian is a person who is born again and who believes on the, on the testimony and the merits of Jesus Christ and the gospel alone. Right now, Baptists fit into well, even that. If the Lord tarries a few more years, you know, Baptist church, I don't know. But I'm a born-again, Bible-believing Christian. Baptist. When I go preaching on the streets, when I go witnessing, I'm not, I'm not out there for my church. Now, if you're saved, and you're born again, and you're looking for your church, all right, where do you live? Oh, you live? Okay, let's see if I can find a King James Bible-believing church in your area. I'll say that. King James. It won't be no good to invite somebody to my church and you know, find out they live in Pittsburgh. They're just visiting down here for the car races or the beach. I don't go out witnessing for my church. I go out witnessing to, for people to learn about Jesus Christ. And they're not all going to get saved. And I'm not going to fill the church house with unsaved, Christian, unsaved people who think they're Christians. Think about that. If the rapture happened today as churches, I mean, if, the, if it would be during church service, I mean, those people would be still sitting in the pews at the rapture come. But the church house was filled. We're not supposed to get the church house filled. We're supposed to be filling heaven. And we only fill heaven by the blood of Jesus Christ, not because you're on a membership roll or you put your behind in a pew. And a lot of preachers do not agree with me on that. They, I don't care what you don't agree. I'm not trying to fill the church. I'm trying to fill heaven. I don't fill heaven. I, 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 I plant the seed. I water the seed. God gives the increase. Plain and simple. So, Matthew chapter 3, verse 1. So we got to look at this point of baptism because... Men have followed it up. You know, you can go to a mountain and the snow starts melting and you'll get yourself a nice stream 
and that water be nice and tasty, fresh and cool. And like, oh, this 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 bottled water is not that fresh stream. But the, if, if, if people have gone up further up on the mountain and have put their horses and their dogs and their cows at that same stream, you're not going to want to drink that water. It's been polluted. And when men step into that water and the mud kicks up and all that, you pollute it. Now the King James Bible is the very Word of God. It's going to be the Word of God that's in heaven. I believe it's written by the blood of Jesus Christ, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, leadership of God the Father. Yes, it was written by man. So are textbooks. But their textbooks won't be in glory. And there are men out there who have taken the King James Bible and they have followed it up with modern versions. And there are men who have taken the King James Bible to a King James church and have followed the Word of God by their traditions and their methods and their ways and their programs. So John, I mean Matthew chapter 3 verse 1 We'll look at some verses. So, in those days, John the Baptist, that's not a denomination. That is not a denomination. Was in the wilderness of Judea. Say, repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Kingdom of heaven is not, is not church age doctrine. We're not looking for the kingdom of heaven. We're looking for New Jerusalem. When you go flying through... This is why we're not doing Matthew. When you go flying through Matthew, it's an Israeli book. It's a Jewish book. It's a Hebrew book. It has some points for the church, but not all. I don't go preaching on the street the, the gospel of the kingdom. I go preaching on the street the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. And if you want to go to heaven, you go to heaven by Jesus nothing more. I don't baptize nobody. I've never baptized anybody from the street ministry. So it's a work that John's doing to Israel. He's preaching and he's, repeat, he's preaching repentance. That's missing from churches today too. Come as you are. All are welcome here. What about the repentance? Well, we don't want to point fingers. We don't want to offend anybody. You offended God. For this is he that spoken of the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. So this is biblical. This is sound. This is found in the scriptures of Isaiah. Verse 6. And were baptized of him in the Jordan, confessing their sin. They are confessing sin. So the foundation of baptism in the Bible is a man is preaching. He's, re -pre he's preaching repentance. They are confessing their sins. Then they're going under the water. I mean... Verse 7, but when he saw many of the Pharisees Sadducees to his baptism, he said, O generation of vipers, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? The Pharisees Sadducees, Sadducee, Israel, Jewish, Hebrew, not Gentile, not church people. No Gentiles at all. Verse 8. Bring forth, therefore, fruits meet for repentance. There's that repentance. Bring forth fruit. Do something to show you're saved. That's not church age doctrine. At no point do I come up, have you believed in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved? Yeah, I have. Well, show me. Do I never tell anybody, okay, you never received Christ as your Savior? Well, show me something that you mean you're going to do. No, that's not the salvation. Listen, after salvation, there's fruits according to James. You're going to serve the Lord because you love the Lord because He first loved you. I preach on the streets because I love the Lord because the Bible says to do it. I don't do it to be saved. 
Because if I preach in the street to be saved, what if my foot takes me out and I can't preach on the, on the street for one week, two weeks, three weeks, or four weeks? Or what if I go in the hospital and I can't preach? Or what if I die of an infection? Do I not go to heaven because I couldn't preach on the street? It's not worse. People come up to me, well, I'm a good person. That's works. That's not salvation. John says, show me your works. James says, show me your works after you're saved. Now, I have a right. This side of Calvary. Somebody come up to me, well, you know, I'm saved. Okay, I'll take you at your word. And if I see your conduct and you're not living as a new creature, you have not changed, you are not living to a holy life, I can look at you and say, you know what? I'm going to deal with you an unsaved person. Paul says, I have the right not to judge the person. I have the right to judge the things. And when somebody proclaims, oh, I'm a Christian and they don't witness at all, they don't read their Bible... Sir, that's what the Bible tells you to do. Why well, read my Bible? Well, that doesn't. And you know, people, you know, all right. If you're going to heaven. I read my Bible. That's not going to get you to heaven. Have you believed in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved? I go to church. That's not going to get you to heaven. Now, after you're saved, go to church. Get yourself a Bible-believing church. Get in there and grow. But salvation. There are many people who are going to miss the rapture. Many people are going to go into hell sitting in a pew. Why? Because they had not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. There are going to be Catholics that get to heaven in shock of the Baptist because they have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Though they be Catholic. And they'll be Baptists in hell burning forever because they were a member of a church but they have not had their name written down in the Lamb's Book of Life in Jesus Christ. Now the time period we're dealing with right now, there's a John in Israel, you do works. You, and those works are the works of the law. We're not under law, we're under grace. And verse 11, I indeed baptize you into water repentance, but he that cometh after mighty than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Do you know what I preach on the streets? You better believe on the Lord Jesus Christ before Jesus comes. You may die before he comes. John is not saying believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. I am told to tell him to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. John is saying you better clean up your act. You better get that leaven out of your house. You've got to be three times in, in, in Jerusalem. You better get rid of those idols. Listen, if we had to get rid of idols for salvation, many Baptists and their idols, they'd be damned to hell. Baptists got all kinds of idols. NASCAR, baseball, football, television. Those are idols. But today you can have those idols and believe on Lord Jesus Christ and go to heaven and you know you get wood, hay, or stubble, but you can go to heaven by the Lord Jesus Christ. If the man we're talking about here, an uh, Israeli comes up and he's still got his idols, he's not going to the promised land. He's not going to the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus has not even shown up. And then there are some people who teach, oh, I've got to be baptized with the Holy Ghost, talking to blah, 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 and we're going to be baptized with fire. Don't even dare think about being baptized with fire. You don't even know how moronic you sound. Now you know why they teach you to come be baptized with fire? Because they're going to be baptized with fire and they don't want to be alone. They don't want to be alone. So, Matthew 3.13 Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. Okay, let me ask you a question. Let me just ask you a straight out question. Here comes Jesus. Is he God? Yes. Is he without sin? Yes. What do you do when people say get baptized for your sins? 
Baptism, baptism will, and they say it, Acts 2 3, baptism will wash you of your sins. What do you do with Jesus? He's going to be baptized in a moment. If you're saying baptism gets rid of your sin, you just said that Jesus is going to be baptized in a moment. Is a sinner. There are people out there that teach baptism gets rid of your sin. Jesus came to John to be baptized. Jesus is not a sinner. Baptism has to be something more than sinner. But John forbade him. You know, because John, because you know, you don't need to be baptized because you're saved, Jesus. Saying, I have need to be baptized of thee. Comes thou to me, and John's like, you know what John's saying? You're God. How dare I baptize you? God, you ought to be baptized in me. And John's the one that said, I must decrease, he must increase. John was humble. John's like, let God baptize me, not me baptize God. I know the Jehovah Witnesses wouldn't say it like that, but I'm, I'm going to. And Jesus answered and said unto him, suffer, that means allow. That don't mean pain and agony. That means allow. Suffer it to be so now. For this is becometh us, us, to fulfill all righteousness, then he suffered him. John, yes, Jesus, we're fulfilling scriptures. We're doing things that have been outlined in the scriptures. I've got to do this. Okay. Jesus, when he when he was baptized, if baptism removes your sin, cleanses you of your sin, and whatever it does with your sin, what on earth is Jesus doing in that water? He's sinless. And if you any way profess that baptism gets rid of your sin, and Jesus is now wet in the water, you have proclaimed that Jesus was a sinner. I don't want to stand in your shoes. Now, you talk about the unpardonable sin, which we can't do today. Imagine you, I don't think, you're not even saved if baptism saved you, it saved you of your sin. You're not going to be at the judgment seat of Christ. You're going, to be at, you're going to be at the great white throne judgment. Imagine looking at God in the face and saying, you're a sinner because you were baptized. Mm. You're going to hell because you're a fool. If water baptism can wash away your sin, and Jesus, when he was baptized, what do you do with that statement? Have we not taken the Bible, and as a family, when we go into the book of Psalms, have we not taken the Bible and attacked these religions? Book of Psalms attacks the Jehovah Witnesses, and it devours them up that Jesus is God. Well, we've taken the water dogs and we devour them up with the word of God because if, sin remo if water removes your sin, what on earth is Jesus standing there dripping wet? It's not to remove your sin. Went up straightway out of the water. Do you know what that means? That means he was immersed. John did not sprinkle him. John did not use a, a fire hydrant. John didn't put a, 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 a thing of water and pour it on his forehead. That means Jesus went in the water and came out of the water. Sinless perfection, God, holy and righteous. It did not remove no sins because there was no sin to be on him. What on earth happened then? I'll tell you what happened. Nation of Israel standing up there at the banks of the Jordan River. They've been watching John preach and they've been hearing John preach and they've been watching their family repent. They've been watching their family say, we're going to live right because the Messiah is on their way. Now he, the Messiah is proclaimed. Here he is. And John the Baptist is going to take that guy. He says it's the Lamb of God. John's going to take our Messiah. He's going to put him in the water. It's a public demonstration. I got saved April 25th, 1987. April 26th, I, I walked into church. I said, I have received the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. 
You take seven days after that to the following Sunday, which I think would be the 31st, if I know my, something like that. Seven days from, from, from the 26th, I went back in the church and I was baptized in front of the church with my family and with people in the church that I made a public documentation on the Sunday after the Saturday I was saved. And then the following Sunday, I made a documentation of the public to say the fact is, I am going to die to myself. You take a dead body, you bury it. And I'm coming resurrected out as a new creature. So when the, when the preacher put me under the water, you're dead. If he would have held me under, I would have been dead. He pulls me out in the water of resurrection of, of, of a new life, a new creature. I'm born again, I have rededicated, I have a new birth, I'm a new creature. I didn't need that baptism. April 25th, I was born again, I became saved, my name was written down in the Lamb's Book of Life, I, I became a child of God, the Holy Spirit dwelled in me, new creature began the next day, on April 26th, I began witnessing, telling people about hell. I didn't need a baptism yet. I already began witnessing the day after I was saved, telling people about hell. I didn't even know what I was saying. Just don't go to hell. How about the thief on the dying cross? Oh, the crucifixion. Oh, that, wait a minute. Oh, stop. Take that thief down. We've got to put him in the water first. No, it did not happen. Oh, oh, the Baptist Committee. What do you guys want? Take that dying thief off. He's got to come sit in our church. We've got to vote him as a member. No, it did not happen. Oh, oh, that guy, wait a minute, that dying thief has got to get money, he's got to get time. No, that didn't happen. That dying thief said, Jesus, I believe who you are. Welcome me into your kingdom, Jesus said today. Now, he stayed on that cross. He wasn't baptized. He didn't join no church. He had no denomination. He went to glory. What do you do with that? He took his sins and he put them upon Jesus. He said, Jesus, I'm guilty. He told the other dying thief, You're, we are guilty. That dying thief preached on the cross before he died. You can't even get baptized water dogs to preach Christ. You can't even get baptized church members of the Baptist church to get out there and witness the lost people. That unbaptized, that unbaptist on the, on the cross was witnessing to the other guys that he didn't get saved too. You need to repent. And he did. He repented of that. No baptism, no church membership. When Jesus went straightway out of the water, lo, the heavens opened unto him, he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, not a dove. We talked about that last week. Lighting upon him. And a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Now look at the Trinity. Jesus Christ is God. He's wet. There he is. He's wet. From head to toe, he's wet. The Holy Spirit comes down like a dove. There's the Holy Spirit. And then the voice from heaven, that's my son, I'm well pleased. There's the Trinity. After Jesus was baptized, not for sin, as a public, say, hey, here I am. Here's my testimony. God speaks out of heaven. That's him. That's the one. And it, later on, we don't know who you are. Mm, yes, you do. Mm -hmm. Yes, you do. So. Now, Jesus being baptized. 1 Peter 2.22. Let's look at Jesus being baptized. I mean, I would hate for you just to take my word for it. And say, you know, I know Stiley. He's pretty good. He, he's not going to lie to me. I don't know. Maybe I would. Maybe the devil came into me like he came to the Jews. I mean, I mean did not Jesus tell Peter, to, you know, get, get away from me, Satan? First Peter 2.22. Let's see what the Bible says. and not, Never mind what Stiley says. I don't care what Stiley says. I care what the Bible says. 
You want to get in that pulpit and preach? You tell me what the Bible says. I don't care what you say. You tell me what the Bible says. That's what it counts. Why do people hate me so much? Because the Bible says it, not me. And if you say it's wrong, I bring in the Bible, I show you where you're wrong with the Bible, and you don't get like it. Have I become your enemy because I told you the truth? 1 Peter 2.22. Let's ask Peter. We'll look at 21 first. For even hitherto were we called because Christ, who's that? That's Jesus. Also suffered for us, there's part of the gospel, leaving us an example. What's the example? Christ suffered. What are we supposed to be doing? We're supposed to be suffering. Are you not suffering? You're not doing right. But that's not our message. That's later. That we should follow his steps. Who, who, who are we talking about? Christ. Did no sin. Then why was he baptized? If baptism can wash away your sin, Peter says he did no sin. Let's ask Peter again. Chapter 1, verse 19. Let's ask Peter again. Peter, tell me. And he's not the first pope, but let's ask what he says. Hey, this, I want to... Somebody mark this or just pre-mark? Hmm. This used to be Tracy's Bible. I don't know. That's hers. I don't know. I mean, it's, I'm just saying it's so perfectly marked. That's hers. So, 1 Peter 1, 19. But with the precious blood of Christ, okay, we know what we're talking about, as a lamb, we're going to be looking at the lamb pretty soon, a couple weeks maybe, without blemish and without spot. That means no sin. So if you go into a church that says baptism, you need to be baptized to wash away your sin, Jesus was baptized and he had no sin. Peter said that. Well, let's look at Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 9. Let's look at a book written to Hebrews. Now, we don't know who wrote Hebrews. Some people say it's Paul. It looks like he wrote chapter 13, but... Hebrews 9, 14. Whoever wrote Hebrews to the Hebrews... The writer of Hebrews says 9.14 How much more shall the blood of Christ Okay, that's who we're talking about Who through the eternal spirit Offered himself without spot No sin How on earth does baptism Wash away your sins If Jesus was baptized And he had no sins What? I mean, what happens when you baptize, uh, go to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15? If baptism can wash away your sins, man, I feel sorry for the fish. What happens to the fish when your sins come washed off you and get floated down the river? I mean, do they contaminate the fish? It's nonsense because guess what? The washing away of your sins is nonsense. It's by blood. Hebrews 4, 9, no, 4, 15. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmity, but was in all points tempted like as we are, Jesus, verse 14, yet without sin. All right, Peter says it. Whoever wrote Hebrews said it. John, 1 John 3.15. Let's go ask John. John, the beloved apostle. John, who leaned on the breast of Jesus. John, the writer of the Revelation. John, Peter, James, and John. Let's see what John has to say. Uh, 1 John 1.3.5. Uh, yeah, 1 John 3.5. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins. That's Jesus. And in him is no sin. That's interesting. Because there are churches out there that teach 
Their baptism, their baptism will wash away your sins. I said, I feel sorry for the fish. I've seen these, some of these people baptized in the ocean. You know, I feel sorry for the people that are swimming in the beach because if their sins come along, maybe their sins washes on the, the, sun, the beach goers. I don't know. But it's nonsense because it's nonsense. Jesus did not need to be baptized to be washed of his sin. He was sinless, but he needed to be baptized publicly to show Israel, I'm the one. We get baptized to say, hey, Christ saved me. Many who are working. I'm a new creature. I'm supposed to be a new creature. You know, baptism today has been so, all right, just get baptized. Come on, get baptized. And, and the assurance of baptism and the meaning, of the true meaning of baptism is not really taught. You know, all right, you've received Jesus Christ as your Savior. Now, the next ordinance of the church is baptism. You realize when we put you in the water, you realize what, you, what, you, what you're going to do? You're going to declare that you have received Christ as your Savior. You're going to get. You're going to die to self. You're going to come out of that water, a brand new body, brand new you, newborn, new creature. And you, from this day forth, if you're not going to serve your father, the devil, you're going to serve God, the Father. How many people got baptized after salvation and led a dead life, even from the waters of baptism? They go to church, they baptize, you never see them again. And then the church knocks up. We got one saved, we got one baptized. Look at that, it's two notches. Ah. <laughs> and God's up in heaven with a lad in the sea in church. Hey. Blech. Blech. That's lukewarm. Blech. Read Revelation chapter 3. When I was born again, Joe Caswell witnessed to me in my grandma's house. I received Jesus Christ as my Savior. The uh, next day I witnessed about hell. And then I was baptized a week later. Joe Caswell of Connecticut has never ever taken me under his wings, has never grown me in the Lord, has never guided me in the Lord. That's wrong. I got one saved. Oh, baptized and saved. Oh. I had a man the other day, he said, he's witnessing to a Jehovah Witness. She said, she said, she said, I don't know why she got in the Jehovah Witness movement. Because no one grew her. That's you right. got her saved, and then you got her baptized. Yay! What about growing her? What are you going to do when you take a baby who's been newly born, and you just throw him on the bed? And then you preach about, you know, Planned Parenthood. They're killing babies. You're letting your babies just wonder about People who are saved go to the Jehovah Witness movement because people who got saved don't get grown, get no attention, get no care. They, and, oh, they love me. They're going to teach me. To, they're going to teach me. To, they have a Bible. I'll tell you why. We got one saved. We got baptized. Yay! Did you grow him? No, we're going to go next week, go knock on more doors. And you don't like what I say? It's the truth. Well, they didn't come to Sun they didn't come to Sunday school. They, they don't know. They're still in the world. Well, we're not going to sit in a living room and have a Bible study. We're not going to sit in a gazebo and have a Bible study. We're not going to do those kind of things. Yeah. I'm rich. I have no need of nothing. Look how great we are. Blech. Says God. I wasn't the Philadelphia church age. If people don't like what I say, I don't care. Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3 again, verse 16. We can't just get them saved, we gotta grow them. Now if we offer, and we try, and we do what we can. And they refuse. Okay, fine. 
I've got many people, I, I try to grow and, I, and they get off the wagon. I'm not getting off the wagon with you. But I'll put my hand out. If you don't want to grab it, then I'll move somebody else. If they don't want to help, okay, that's a different story. They are spiritually retarded by choice. And no harm to people who are born retarded. I'm talking about spiritually retarded. If they, want, if they don't want to grow, they don't want to help, then they're spiritually retarded by choice. Don't you dare have them spiritually retarded because you didn't want to train them. But you got them saved. And I know churches out there. We got them saved. Put a little notch on their belt. Where are they? Oh, I don't know. What kind of parent are you? When, when Paul says about Timothy, Timothy, my own son in the faith, and he grew Timothy. Even after his mother and his grandmother taught him in the scriptures, Paul took Timothy under his hand. What about Demas? He went away. Oh, okay, he went. He went. I don't think Paul just let him go. I think. Because look at Philemon. Onesimus. Left Philemon. He got saved. Paul's like, you know, take him back. I know he's done you well. He's repented. He got right. He's got sick. I like to use him, but he, he wants to get right with you. Paul made the effort. But it takes too much time and effort to get everybody who we got saved to grow them. Well, if you plant too much seed, Even when you grow a garden, I mean, sometimes you got to go in that garden and say, you know what, there's too many tomato plants. That one's got to go. That one's got to go. That one, I'm going to take care of one. I'm going to prune that one. I'm going to tidy that one up. I'm going to put the stick up. I'm going to tie that one up. Make sure. That don't happen in many Baptist churches. And then they make the skis. Well, they... I don't know. I don't know. 3.16. And Jesus went up out of the water, a straight way out of the water, and lo, the heavens opened unto him, and saw the Spirit of God descend like a dove, light upon him, and the voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. That was a public decoration. Look at Acts 19.4. Acts 19.4. There were people watching that afternoon. And before Jesus showed up, there were people saying, hey, you know, look at that family. They're getting themselves ready for the Messiah. You know, I, I saw him. He, he put that liquor away. He, he's actually living right. That's the one I saw that John's preaching. Acts 19, verse 4. Then said Paul, John very baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is Christ Jesus. John baptized for the reason of baptism, not salvation, but here comes Jesus. John said, he, I mean, Paul said, John said to the people. There were more than one. John's baptism is not the means of salvation to be saved. Yes, it was water. Um, I think we're going to do this. I think we're going to stop right there. We're going to be picking up baptism again next week with this different aspect. But, you know, yes, we're supposed to witness. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. Yes, we are. But they're called newborn babes. What do you do with a newborn babe? Just let it take it. Okay, you're born now. Go get yourself a job. Go. I 
mean, but then again, we live in a world today that, I mean, look at Timothy. Timothy already had a godly mother and a godly grandma that brought him up. We don't have that today. Take a drive one time. You got money for gas. Take a drive. Take a drive where you live, Daytona Beach, and look at all the churches in Daytona Beach on all the side roads. Go down side roads. Look at how many churches there are. And then looking at all the, the tobacco places, look at all the alcohol places, look at all the bars, look how much beer is, is sold on Bikers Week, look how much beer is consumed at the racetrack, and then tell me who's got the influence. And then some of those churches, you, you drive around, you'll see, and they'll boast, we had 500 people in churches. But you ain't got nothing going. The race car plays up here get, I don't know, I'm going to say thousands. And all they do is go around and around and around in a circle. You get hundreds of people in Sunday school, you get a hundred thousand people in, in church service, you don't even go around and around, you just don't do nothing. I met these Christians. I'm saying, what do you do for the Lord? I, I, we, we see them at the farmer's market. They come up, well, I'm a Christian. You're cheering people away. That's not what Jesus would do. I let my light shine. When was the last time you told someone about hell? I wouldn't talk about hell. I, I, it was so funny. I had one guy, we were door knocking. And we got, uh, we got to talk about I said, well, I said, okay, where do you go to church? It was over there, he pointed. A lot of churches over there. What's the name of your church? Uh, well, um, I know it was an excuse, but he didn't even know what the name of his church was. It was an excuse. Church is not going to save you. And a church is not a church if it's not going to grow you. And I'm sorry, but Preaching salvation message every Sunday morning is not feeding the sheep. You're inviting the goats. And all goats do is but but the pastor. Jesus told Peter, and this is scripture, you don't like it, I don't care. Feed my sheep. You didn't get it? Feed my lamb. You didn't get it? Feed my sheep. Keep the goats on the outside. And I say some hard words today. If somebody gets a hold of them, I don't care. I'm already in a hot bucket of water already. That's why the devil's kicking my butt. Because I preach the truth. But number one reason today is that there are religions out there. If you to wash away your sin. This is the main reason today's preaching. There's religions out there say you can wash away your sins. All right, explain to me if Jesus getting baptized. When he was sinless. Peter says it. Whoever wrote Hebrews says it. And John says it. And it's in the Gospels. So when you have a friend who believes in baptism, it means of salvation, say, okay, it's got one question for you. And you, may, you, don't, even, you don't even have to know where it is in the Bible. You've got one question for you. Was Jesus sinless? Oh yeah, of course. And why did he need to be baptized? And they'll give you all kinds of baloney. And baloney's not good. Lord God the Father, just ask you to bless this time, Lord. I'm just sorry that Ron wasn't here. And Lord, I pray he would be. And Lord Michael, he needs help. But Lord, he needs help from you. Lord God, I need help. Lord God, I got another section, and Lord, the devil's attacking. He wants me to turn on you, and I'm not going to quit. Lord, I do ask one prayer of all, one prayer. And Lord, everybody knows what that prayer is. Lord God, protect us, keep us well this day. Lord, get us in our home before it rains. For Jesus' sake, we pray. Amen.